all purpose that they're used on kickoff returns like Archie Griffin. They're used on kick coverage like offensive star Brian Bashnagel. They just play every department of football. Ray Griffin, the rookie brother of Archie Griffin, also in on the tackle. Scodani now has 51 yard punt average, two kicks of over 50. Woody Hayes, the coach now, and Michigan State now must try from its own 12-yard line, first and 10. Mike Vernon Jones to the left. Touchdown run. What a game. What a there game. Is number 40 being congratulated. Let's watch once more. It's a quick opener by Levi Jackson. He gets by the linebacker. Here he sets sail. He wasn't about to get shot. Watch him turn on this feet. All 212 pounds of him. Number 40, Levi Jackson. Six points for the Spartans. Now it's 15 to 13 in favor of Michigan State. All right. 15-13, we have 3.17 to go, and a great football team like Ohio State can move it any number of yards, so don't go away. The number one team is trailing, 15-13. Here is the try for the extra point from Denmark. Hans Nielsen, who kicked the field goal for Michigan State. The kick is up, and it's... A field goal by Ohio State would only tie the football game. To win, they've got to score. Woody would not go for the tie. Woody Hayes will go for the six points. Now you're going to have to see Cornelius Green go to. They got plenty of time. Three minutes and 17 seconds. If they deserve the. Well, Jim McKay, this ought to bring back reminders to you. So let's hear what you have to say and the warmth of the studio. Jim McKay. Well, we were sure watching that one, Chris, and this could be a day of big upsets. Let's take a look at a game in the East in which Temple University of Philadelphia is trying to return to the big time to prove that it's all for real. And look at this. Temple with Steve Joachim, the nation's total yardage leader, is leading Pittsburgh 17 to 14 in the third period of play. But the lead has been going back and forth and there is still a long way to go in that one. Temple leading Pitt by 17 to 14. Georgia and Florida both have a chance still for the Southeastern Conference Championship. But Florida, number seven ranked in the nation, trails Georgia nine to seven. That also in the third period. Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Kentucky leading Vanderbilt. That's another upset. 31 to 12. Back to you, Chris. Well, here's the kick by Michigan State. They lead 16-13, 3-17 to go. Archie Griffin has the ball. He's at the 20, 25. And he nearly got away. If you just joined us, Michigan State went ahead on a first and 10 from their own 12. The handoff Baggett to Jackson, 88 yards. The score, they go ahead. And now 87 comes into the lineup for Ohio State. He is Bartasek. So watch. Chris, I'm, I'm glad that ABC made the intelligent decision to televise this game. It has to be the most exciting game we've had all year. Well, you stick with the first team, you can't go wrong. All right, from the, near the 30 now. 16-13. Cornelius Green. Intercepted. Oh, it was tapped. No, it's an interception. No. There's a little a disagreement among the officials. Right, right. One said it was trapped. The other said, well, Gene Calhoun is the referee from Madison, Wisconsin. Let's look at it again. And I couldn't tell. I don't think the crowd liked the decision, but the one who said it was incomplete had a better angle to watch. There it is again. Watch it. 
I think he caught it. I don't know. It looked like he caught it. Look. Terry McClowry. Here it is again. 49. Here it is again. I think he caught it. All right. You're in East Lansing, Spartan Stadium. The team, the home team leading 16-13, 3.05 to go. And needless to say, the Buckeyes can, players cannot hear green signals. And the Spartan defense is upset. Let's take another look at it. You judge for yourself. Watch it right here. McLowry has his hands under it. Looks like he cradled it and caught it. I'm not saying that because I'm a next Michigan State coach. I'm saying it because it looks to be true. Listen, I'm from Purdue, and I think he caught it. All right, Archie Griffin. Look out. Here he goes. That's what I mean about a great team. Superior athletes at every position, and Griffin has ripped one from the 29 to the Michigan State 40 and a half with two minutes and 54 seconds to go. Michigan State is in the lead 16-13. A field goal will only give a tie. All right, watch again. Let's take a look. It's a draw play. Archie Griffin, the great running back that he is, certainly he would make a great Heisman candidate or award recipient. Watch him go. He's just determined to get that ball down to the goal line. 30 yards and a first down. He's now 134 yards on the day from the 40 of Michigan State, Champ Henson. And now the test of the Spartan defense. Jim Taubert, number 94, and Greg Schaum, number 95. And there's Coach Woody Hayes. Undefeated in eight games. The last time they were defeated in a regular season game was right here, Duffy, when you coached the Spartans. 19-12, the final score. Now 16-13, 2-12 to go. 301 yards on the ground. Second and seven. Well, he's got time to tie his shoes. <laughs> There's that elusive Cornelius Green. He was trapped for what uh, an apparent loss, but he ended up gaining five yards. I'd like to say, Chris, that the, the defensive line, Shaw and Taubert, the two linebackers, uh, the McLowry twins, the ends, Duda and Smith, and Rowe Camp, the middle guard, all of these defenders for Michigan State have played a superb game. All right, now time is a factor, a minute 59 to go. Green has thrown five times, the last five incomplete. He is two of nine for the game. So with a third down and three from the 33, Watch the Buckeyes. Another third down situation for them. We have a minute 59 to go. Michigan State leading 16-13. He gets to the 23. A gain of almost 10. First down, Mike Duda in on the play. It's almost impossible to contain Cornelius Green. He's just such a great performer. This is a, a poised Ohio State team, and they've got a little bit of time, a minute and 47 seconds left. Another region has joined us on our NCAA regional coverage. The Kentucky Vanderbilt viewers are joining us, and would you believe that Michigan State leads Ohio State 16-13, first and 10 at the 23, Ohio State with the ball. Hazel is deep, overthrown to Bartasek. Ohio State with 18 first downs, 17 of them on the ground, and now it's second down and 10 with a minute 31 to go. Two field goals by Ohio State, one by Michigan State, a touchdown by Henson, and then an 88-yard touchdown by Michigan State's Jackson has put the Spartans on top. Cornelius Green's a fine passer, but he's much more dangerous when he goes back to pass and elects to run with the ball. Second down and 10 with a minute, 31 to go. They trail by three. Ohio State, number one. Hazel. Hazel gets it inside the 15 of Michigan State. Jaw Hunt on a sure tackle, number 32. And there goes Hazel, number 82, back to the huddle. He's from Xenia, Ohio. Uh, Chris, Ohio State has a minute and 22 seconds and only one timeout left. Now, Green has thrown 11 times. He has completed three. Touchdown came on a dive by Henson, capping a 44-yard march. They got their go-ahead field goal of 19 yards at the end of an 83-yard drive. Bartasek and France are two tight ends on third and one. And Champ Henson gets the job done. 
First down with a minute six to go. And the ball is spotted. All right, at the 11-yard line. This is the mark of a great team when you're facing defeat with a minute to go or two minutes to go, and you can come moving down the field as this Ohio State team is done. Remember, they moved from their own 30, trailing by three. Fashionable in motion. First and 10 from the 11. Griffin. Griffin bows to the six. Jim Taubert, 94. There you see Griffin getting up. 53 is Pat McClary. The other half of the McClary twins from Dearborn. So with the ball at the six now. Mm. Second down and five. 40 seconds to go. That's the last Ohio State timeout. They're going to have to put the ball in the air, I would think, Chris, because a couple of running plays will run out the clock. All right. If you're wondering about Archie Griffin, he has rushed for over 100 yards in his 19th straight game. He has 138. But what the Buckeyes want is victory to remain number one and highlight the showdown later this month against the Michigan Wolverines. So the Spartan fans and all of Michigan have had quite a show out here this afternoon by a rapidly improving Michigan State team with victories over Purdue and Wisconsin in the last two weeks. Three weeks ago, a tie against Illinois. 16-13. Michigan State leading. 40 seconds to go. The ball is at the six. It is second and five. Watch. Archie Griffin has scored a touchdown in every game this year. None today. 138 yards, second and five from the straight T formation. And Henson is oh so close. Champ Henson, who scored the only Ohio State touchdown. Now the clock is running. Now stopped. 29 seconds. As you look at Coach Woody Hayes, Henson has 92 yards. And the Buckeyes... measurement remember it was second and five at the six officials timeout stopping the clock the measurement now the chain being stretched it is first and goal inside the one North Carolina State is leading Penn State 12 to nothing An upset in the making in the fourth quarter and we have 25 24 seconds first and goal for the Buckeyes they trail by three. They did not get in. Harold Henson, we have 10 seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And Michigan State has upset Ohio State. What a, what a game, what a game, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the students. On the oh, field. This is unbelievable. What a thrill. What a goal line stand. A little bit of confusion on the part of the Buckeyes. And it's a tough loss for them against an improving and fired up Michigan State team. They have knocked off the number one team, one of the all time great teams, by a score of 16 to 13. It's hard to believe. Last time Ohio State was defeated, it was right here. Now we see the Ohio State players jumping for joy. Do you suppose we'll have a, a new ruling? It appears maybe the, the game isn't clock. over. Maybe that the scoreboard clock is not official and they have one second left. Gene Calhoun is the referee, an experienced one from Madison, Wisconsin. There was joy in the white and scarlet jersey players. But now they're filtering back toward the far sideline. Some of them still elated. So we'll just have to wait and see with all the crowd. And now the fans are moving back. So hold everything. It was 16-13 with no time left on the clock. They did reel off a play as I was counting down the seconds to you. I recall saying 3-2. And then I was watching the play and not the clock. So it appears that 
I don't know whether you're confused or not, Chris, but I'm sure confused. I don't know. They didn't have any timeouts left. I don't know what the decisions have decided, the officials have decided. It's, it looks like they're going to give Ohio State another play, but how do they stop wow. the clock? That's what I'd like to know. Well, Jim Blambley is down on the sidelines, and perhaps he can get a clarification of a bizarre ending to an NCAA game of the week. And now the Michigan State players are going toward the locker room, which means one thing, but not conclusive, because we have not heard from uh, referee Gene Calhoun. Well, we're, we're not going to speculate. This I, looks like a rerun, doesn't it? <laughs> looks like a rerun. That's, that's a replay. LSU and Alabama can come up with a game half this good. It'll be a great doubleheader on ABC. These were two fine football teams today. And I, I can't help but feel a, a little touch of empathy for Woody Hayes, one of the all-time great coaches. This is a great Ohio State team. Well, the last time they were defeated was right here, 1972, regular scheduled game. And now the announcement has been made. The Michigan State Spartans have pulled the upset of the year, coming from behind with an 88-yard touchdown run by Levi Jackson, a famous name in football. 16-13 is the final score. Let's take a look at the final moments of this hectic game. Let's watch the last play of the game. He did not get over. He did not get over. And here's where we started counting the clock. We were about down to seven here. Yep. And of course, they were out of timeouts. And the Ohio State was hoping to get up there. Here's the counting down of the clock. Now. And you see the umpire, or the head linesman, indicating. I think what it was. You have every man on your team has to be set for a full right. second before you run a play and they were still going down some of the Ohio State line were going down so it is illegal procedure and they would have gotten a five yard penalty. Greg Shom of Baltimore Duffy if this is official <laughs> score and I assume it is we have to give him credit because he was there to stop Henson. Greg Shom number 95 a junior from Baltimore defensive right tackle. He really raised up and used all his might to I stop him. I recruited him out of Baltimore. I come from a fine family. His dad Bill is here for the game and he's an outstanding player. He was picked the outstanding player in the Baltimore area when he was a high school senior. We haven't picked our outstanding player. Is the game over or is it? Well the goalposts are coming down nonetheless and now the fans again are heading in uh, a southerly direction here in East Lansing Michigan and let's rerun it again. for the duffer. All right. This was a first and goal play. Watch the official up here at the top of your screen. And now lower right hand screen. He signaled a touchdown referee. And there this apparently came after time had run out and they were unofficially lined up or improperly lined up Duffy so are we're they trying to get Gene Calhoun or get some sort of an official rundown on what happened. We've done a lot of games Duffy over 500 and I don't ever think I've seen an ending such I've, as this. Well, I've never while, seen we're such a ending, Chris. Well, while we're trying to get the official let's take a break from one of our important sponsors OK. We'll try to explain what has transpired up to this point. On second and goal, failing on first and goal to get in, trailing 13 to 16, there was confusion as to what really happened. Did Ohio State get in? Were they improperly lined up? Did they get the go-ahead touchdown? We recall counting to two seconds, then watch the play. We've just received word, as we'll watch the last seconds again, here it is that we will not have an official ending to this game until Commissioner Wayne Duke of the Big Ten talks to his referee, Gene Calhoun. I don't know. I, I don't know, Chris, unless they didn't get the ball snapped before the time ran out. That's the only thing that I... Well, we both saw the clock run out. Wayne Duke is going to make a decision, but I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now because either way, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people. If he elects to give this, allow this touchdown, 
be a happy group of Buckeyes. If he doesn't give it, if he does, doesn't count it, it's going to, yeah, they signal a touchdown. However, one of the officials was elected to be the official timekeeper on the field, and he may have come in and said that Falk had run out before the snap at the center. All right, you see the linesman at the top coming in. Now watch his. He uh, indicates a touchdown. However, if time had expired prior to the snap. We don't know. We're trying to get a ruling from the commissioner before we send it back to Jim McKay and Dave Dials for more scores. But coming into this game, Michigan State, a huge underdog, probably by 25 points. They're on defense now. And Harold Henson, on a first and goal, gets it that far. That was the play before. Ohio State was out of timeouts, so they could not stop the clock. The clock rolling, three, two, and it has to be one before the snap or expired. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. The official who keeps the official time down the field, or who's responsible for that, uh, wasn't in our vision, wasn't in our view. Well, a few battles down on the field. Some people with souvenirs that other folks want. But there were 78,533. So now... Let's look at it once more, the beauty of videotape replay. This is the play, first and goal from a tee of power. That is Henson. Harold Henson, who scored the only Ohio State touchdown. Now, did all 11 players get set for a second before the snap, or did the snap come after time had expired? Well. We'll pass along that ruling because, remember, this is only the first part of a doubleheader, LSU and Alabama coming up later. Right now, down on the field and Jim Lampley. It is not yet clear who has won this football game. Commissioner Wayne Duke has gone to the officials' dressing room and is trying to confer with head official Gene Calhoun right now. All right, Jim Lampley, who has very little room to breathe down there. And not very comfortable because these are fired up fans and uh, meeting or equaling them was the Michigan State football team that had won its last two games over Purdue and Wisconsin had tied Illinois prior to that. A PA announcement here did not satisfy the partisan Michigan State fans. But recapping, Ohio State got off with a 22-yard field goal. Michigan State came back and tied it up with a 39-yarder. And then... Ohio State went ahead 13 to 3. And then Michigan State scored. They tried for two. It failed. And then on an 88-yard touchdown play, Jackson put Michigan State on top again. Once again, we will not give you a final score because it is not official. That's the last one that was on the scoreboard here. We will be back with a definitive report in East Lansing momentarily. Travel arrangements made through a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. There's a new spirit, a new look in the friendly skies. Catch the spirit of friendship service. The preceding was a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Turns out they will sing the praises of Levi Jackson in the streets of East Lansing tonight. There were 317 left in the game and his team was trailing Ohio State when from his own 12-yard line, Levi, Levi Jackson went all the way, all the way for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Disbelief everywhere among the crowd, among uh, more than 78,000 people. But one issue is still in doubt. Who won the game? This was the ending, first and goal from the one for Ohio State, ranked one in the nation, mighty Ohio State. But did they get this next play in or did they not? At this moment, the commissioner of the Big Ten, Wayne Duke, is still in the dressing room with the officials. A man went over, but there was a signal that the game was over. There was also a touchdown signal. And who won it? Did State win in the upset of the year, 16-13, or did Ohio State win 19-16? We'll find out all these things on the Prudential College Scoreboard. The Prudential College Scoreboard is brought to you by the Prudential Insurance Company of America, a company people will come back to. When you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. Well, I'm Jim McKay, and as we said, the issue is still very much in doubt. Once again, Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten, has gone to the official's uh, dressing room, presumably to confer with official Gene Calhoun. Looks like there is some news. Let's go to Jim Lampley at the stadium. It is still impossible. 
impossible to get a definitive report as to whether this football game is over. However, the officials, the game officials, are no longer in the dressing room, no longer in the stadium. They have gone to another area of the campus. Apparently, Commissioner Wayne Duke is with them, but I do not know that for sure. However, the best evidence we have is that the officials are gone, and the game is in all evidence over with. Now back to Jim McKay in New York. It was a little bit difficult, as you heard, to make out Jim Lampley with all that chaos and confusion in the stadium, but I believe his last sentence was that, as they see it now, it is all over and done with, and the officials have left the stadium. However, we will be checking again, I'm sh sure, when this is absolutely official, that apparently Michigan State has upset mighty Ohio State in the college football upset of the year. Now, scores on the Prudential College scoreboard. Here's Dave Diles. Well, Jim, I don't know who's in there with the officials, but I know one place I don't want to be. That's in the locker room right now with Woody Hayes.